Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you all for being here. And let me start by thanking a very special guest, Ken um, Chief, Chief, for taking time off from his busy schedule and being here with us today to talk about uh, French vision for the Indo-Pacific. And uh, uh, Admiral uh, Stoff Bradzuk knows, uh, he needs no introduction for, for I think this audience. We have seen him at the Raisina Dialogue as well. Uh, and he has uh, been um, uh, intricately involved with a lot of the discussions uh, insofar as uh, the Indian government is concerned with the Indian Navy and uh, the larger Indo-strategic, Indo-French strategic engagement. Uh, and he'll be talking about uh, what the French vision is about the about a maritime space, uh, the concept that is now taking shape uh, in front of our own eyes uh, very rapidly, and how that maritime space, uh, how, how that maritime concept has, has allowed India and France together uh, to think uh, more coherently about their strategic priorities and engage more substantively on a range of issues uh, in that maritime space. Uh, and we will have, I'm sure, a lot of questions, comments, and discussion afterwards, uh, after his speech. So let me uh, give the floor to him. And sir, the floor is all yours. And then after that, we'll take questions and comments. Well, thank, thank you very much, uh, Professor Pant. Uh, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very impressed to be here and uh, in front of before this uh, very uh, uh, renowned uh, 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 think tank. And uh, um, I'm also impressed by the title of the conference, the French Strategic Vision of the Indo-Pacific. I'm a mere French admiral. I'm not a strategist, but uh, I will try to raise my level and try to be a little more than uh, uh, a sailor. Uh, I'm the head of the French Navy, and uh, it's always a pleasure to travel halfway around the world to explain why France is, to almost everybody's surprise, an Indo-Pacific nation, despite the four and a half hour jet lag and minus 30 degrees Celsius temperature difference. <laughs> I'm going to, or I'm going to try to, to do so by explaining why the Indo-Pacific matters so much to France. And second, why I believe the French Navy is central in maintaining this interest. So why the Indo-Pacific matters to us as a country. The Indo-Pacific is clearly stated as a French government priority, as confirmed several times over by President Macron. Less than a month ago, President Macron was in La Réunion in Southern Indian Ocean and met representatives of several Indo-Pacific nations with an especially strong participation of Indian officials uh, uh, led by your Minister of State for External Affairs. And that's how our president summed up our strategic view of the Indo-Pacific. I quote, all the economic players in the region are aware that this is the the strategic place, space of tomorrow. We have an unprecedented card to play, the Indo-Pacific being the hub of global maritime trade. It is the crossroads of the world with submarine communication cables, but it will be even more so tomorrow, thanks to its fish stocks and the treasures of biodiversity which it contains. The statement contains all the key words of my following speech. Strategy, prosperity, maritime trade, fish, environment, but also card to play. Why card to play? Why us, France? I know this sounds paradoxical for at least three reasons. First paradox, mainland France appears very far away apart from a number of tiny islands scattered around the region, mostly in the southern Indian Ocean. And yet, these islands generate 93% of our exclusive economic zone, including over 2.5 million square kilometers in the Indian Ocean itself. That is, as I remember, equivalent to the Indian EEZ. And yet, the region is home to a population of 1.5 million French citizens, including over 1 million in Mayotte and La Réunion only, with a very significant population of Indian heritage. And yet, 
more than 70% by value of our imports travel across the region via Bab el Mandeb, Ormuz, and Malacca. Security of these vital arteries has a direct relationship with our country's prosperity. And yet, French trade heavily relies on the 7,000 subsidiary companies. And yet, even outside these islands, 150,000 French, French expatriates, especially in India, have settled in the area. Second paradox, why are we interested into the situation, for example, in South China Sea? We are not even neighbors. True, we are not neighbors, but we are committed, a committed player in the international rules-based order. We are a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. We have jurisdiction over the second biggest exclusive economic zone in the world, 11, square, 11 million square uh, uh, kilometers, the equivalent of the masses of China and Mongolia unified, or USA and Mexico unified. And as President Macron uh, explained in the recent, recent Garden Island speech in Australia, as we are witnessing a resurgence of power politics, we choose democracy. We choose multilateralism. We choose an international rules-based order, the rule of law. We also choose mediation, balance, stability. Therefore, we are concerned every time the international norms are broken or threatened or even undermined, especially in the maritime domain. And that is true regarding state actors, but also non-state actors like drug traffickers or pirates. That's why we chase drug traffickers in the Gulf of Oman, in the Indian Ocean, even when their cargo is not bound for France or their crew not French, just because we want the international law upheld. And like India, we want to speak with a truly independent voice on the world stage. And that sometimes means making courageous and innovative choices in terms of military, in terms of procurement, in terms of alliances. My third paradox. I am thousands of miles away, but I very often respond to natural and man-made disasters all the way across the globe. Why? Because we care. Mainland France is not situated within the intertropical convergence zone where most cyclones happen. Mainland France is not situated within a ring of fire where the likelihood, likelihood of earthquake is greater. But we care. This is why in the recent decades we sent ships and first aiders to Burma, to Mozambique, but also to Central America, to Indonesia, to Vanuatu, to the Bahamas recently. Mainland France is not directly concerned with industrial scale, in illegal fishing, and subsequent, subsequent environmental damage either. But we care about their indirect implications, for example, on food security around the Gulf of Guinea, or on the sustainability of the ecosystems of the Mozambique Channel. Secondly, because we are neighbors. We are neighbors to vulnerable countries in the Caribbean. We are neighbors to vulnerable countries in the South Pacific. We are neighbors to vulnerable countries in the Western Indian, Indian Ocean, like Mozambique or the Comoros. Thirdly, because we can. We have first response units in all five continents and larger ships deployable from Toulon in France. And I'll get back to that in a minute. I hope by now I have already managed to persuade you that the vast majority of these concerns are by large maritime. And I'm now going to explain how, in practical terms, the French Navy is involved in tackling these issues. The French Navy is in the Indo-Pacific. What are we talking about? I have five main French naval establishments in the Indo-Pacific region. Three naval bases on French territories in La Réunion, 
in New Caledonia, east of Australia, and Tahiti in the middle of the Pacific Island, in Pacific Ocean. There you have, in very broad terms, in each territory, one light frigate. There are two in La Réunion, two OPVs, and one supply ship, a couple of reconnaissance aircrafts. We have two bases on foreign soil in Djibouti and in Abu Dhabi, where I was yesterday. We have there in Abu Dhabi the only French admiral holding a flag post, uh, a joint flag post ab uh, abroad. That is to show how much we care about uh, our strategic partnership with the countries in the region, especially India, uh, where I've been told that uh, uh, the oldest strategic partnership of India is with France since independence. There is no high-end warship permanently based here. However, there is always at least one major warship, a frigate, a destroyer deployed in the northern Indian Ocean. In addition, six major warships per year pass through the northern Indian Ocean, can be frigates, can be destroyers, can be nuclear submarines, can be the Charles de Gaulle or a Mistral class LHA like earlier this year. These issues require presence and intervention. Presence. We need to know the area. We need to know the key actors, allies, friends, and competitors. We need to know their habits. We need to know their behaviors. We, know, we have to know the difference between a sambuk and a dungy. We need to know the patterns of life, the usual fishing zones, and the commercial routes the weather, the sea state during the monsoon, or the shipping density in the Gulf of Oman. We need to patrol, we need to show the flag, and we need to deter the bad guys in our immense EEZ. As I routinely say, as I say if a zone is not controlled, it is bound to be pillaged. And if it's pillaged, it's bound to be occupied. And if it's occupied, it will then be contested. This is for presents. My second uh, uh, phase is intervention. Those challenges I have listed earlier require two levels of response. A, li a layer of primary responders. For example, if a hurricane hits the, uh, Madagascar, we can send a light aircraft based in La Réunion or a helicopter from one of our two frigates based there to conduct initial damage assessment and perhaps light supply a light supply ship to bring essential aid such as water and medics. Then, as we did last year in Mozambique with LHA Tonnerre, the heavyweight reinforcements can be deployed, coming from mainland France with thousands of tons of aid, trucks, troops. The same logic applies if our sovereignty is contested somewhere, where the international law is challenged somewhere or if a major, major crisis develops. For instance, in August 1990, the first foreign ship to enter the Arabian Gulf when Kuwait was invaded was, invaded, was a French corvette based in Djibouti. Six months later, we had two carrier strike groups engaged in Operation Desert Storm. Likewise, we usually patrol the Mozambique Channel with a patrol boat. Le Malin, based in La Réunion. But last spring, I decided for once to send the Surcouf, a Toulon-based frigate with guns, missiles, and a helicopter to show the flag around the scattered islands. And I'm very much look forward to organizing joint patrol with the Indian Navy in this area in 2020. <coughs> of course, the balance between presence and intervention between light vessels and major warships between man and unmanned also requires fine tuning, regular analysis, and international cooperation. This part of my job as at the head of the French Navy. But very clearly, I see the, de the demand increasing for Indo-Pacific deployments year after year. And I can forecast no reason for it to change in the coming decades. So in a nutshell, the Indo-Pacific is important to France 
Firstly, because we are a riparian nation. Secondly, because we depend so much on it for security and prosperity. And thirdly, because some vital elements of the common heritage of mankind, be it international law or the environment, are most critically under threat here. Our naval presence in the region is quite significant and increasing because most of the issues we are facing here have either a maritime root cause, like commercial routes or illegal fishing, or are maritime symptoms, like challenges to the international order. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you for your attention. And now, Professor Pant, uh, I'm ready to give uh, my brain to your questions. Thank you, Admiral, for this uh, wide-ranging uh, overview that you provided to us. Uh, before I open this uh, for, uh, for a broader conversation, can I raise one point with you, and perhaps you can elaborate on that, is uh, that we have recently seen calls coming out uh, with re regard to European Union's approach to the Indo-Pacific. And there is, a, there is a perception and there's a growing realization that European Union uh, should play a larger geopolitical role. And I think this has also been uh, pushed by uh, your president in particular. So I was wondering if you can uh, situate French thinking on the Indo-Pacific within the larger thinking uh, in, in Brussels at the moment, and whether there is enough convergence between the two, or are we looking at uh, two different visions of Indo-Pacific emerging out uh, from the Western European continent? Well, you, you're starting with a very uh, 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 above my uh, 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 level question uh, on geopolitics, but uh, 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 I, can, I can give you an example and, and elaborate on that. Uh, uh, you mentioned that President Macron, uh, uh, one of, the, uh, uh, of his uh, <coughs> main lines is strategic autonomy of Europe. And uh, this is something which is still in debate within Europe, because as many uh, uh, observers say, Europe does not think herself as a geopolitical uh, 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 object. And uh, it'd be uh, an economical object, object, a cultural object, but not a geopolitical, and, 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 and even not a military object. And that's something that, uh, 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 it's still a debate on our continent. Nonetheless, uh, uh, we had started several European operations, especially in the Indian Ocean, uh, like Operation Atalanta around the Horn of Africa, uh, uh, which is now commanded from Rota in uh, Spain. Uh, <clears throat> last time, uh, uh, a destroyer came to uh, uh, Mumbai, it was uh, Casa. It came to Mumbai with the European flag as a part of Operation Atalanta, just to, 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 to show how uh, 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 Europe could be involved in uh, uh, the operation of, uh, well, in the reality of the Indian Ocean. Uh, uh, we are also a second maritime operation for Europe, which is of Libya, called SOFIA, which is more aimed at controlling uh, uh, the uh, 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 <coughs> trafficking of human beings across the central Mediterranean from uh, uh, Libya to, uh, uh, to Italy. Uh, uh, we are an increasing interest of European countries to join us in uh, uh, around West Africa, where uh, they have both drug trafficking, massive illegal fishing, and uh, a, a piracy problem uh, coming out of the delta of, of Niger. And we are uh, working with our uh, European allies to uh, start, hopefully, uh, uh, a mission in uh, the Strait of Hormuz, and uh, um, uh, Minister Pali have been uh, uh, public on that, uh, trying to have a, a commanded from Abu Dhabi uh, a, a maritime operation for maritime security in the Strait of Hormuz, and also to build an independent, uh, 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 autonomous view on what's happening uh, uh, in the area. So. Uh, uh, 
France issued, published an Indo-Pacific uh, uh, strategy. Uh, it's on the table. And as we always do in Europe, I think we are working step by step. And uh, uh, well, European ships, uh, warships are around the Horn of Africa. Hopefully, it will be uh, 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 involved uh, further uh, uh, northeast. Well, and so I think we're walking towards uh, uh, this uh, 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 a more coherent and permanent presence. As I said in my, what I said in my speech about the, the economical importance, the environmental importance of the Indo-Pacific uh, region uh, uh, applies to France, but applies obviously to the whole continent I belong to. My question is really a corollary to what uh, Professor Pant has asked. Uh, starting from Sam Malo, one of the most important relationships you were building up was with Britain, the Anglo French Anglo uh, naval uh, coordination was becoming very important. Do you expect this to continue once they pull out of Europe? Yes. You saw Catherine and this. Three short, very short questions. Uh, the Indo-Pacific, the Chinese have been making various bases here. But of late, they are moving towards Europe, continental Europe. Djibouti, uh, Italy, Piraeus, as you know, 49 years days, maybe Spain. Additionally, they are weaning away many countries in Central and East Europe away from the European Union. So, is there any response pattern being envisaged? Number one. Number two. The United States and occasionally Britain and France do send ships objected to by the Chinese past their islands that they're fortifying in the South China Sea. How long can this continue? I mean, there can't be a status quo. Something has to give at whatever time. Is there anything looking forward to that? Any more robust action planned in concert with the other navies that are in a position to act? Thank you very much. OK. Uh, um, Saint-Malo, uh, UK, and France. Uh, <clears throat> I used to say that uh, the Royal Navy is the, the twin of the French Navy. I, I, I think uh, Tony Radak in my, uh, the first year of, uh, uh, would say he, uh, he's the elder of the twins, probably. Uh, <laughs> but we are very similar. We operate nuclear submarines. We operate uh, 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 aircraft carriers. We operate uh, uh, oceanic deterrent. We operate roughly the same size Navy. And more important, the our decision-making process is very similar. A and it's unique in Europe, uh, in the EU, I, I would prefer to say. It's, it's unique. Uh, uh, Germany, even though they are very powerful uh, and extremely po uh, uh, powerful and on the economic uh, 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 <coughs> point of view, um, <coughs> constitutionally, they don't have the freedom we can have. So if I, if I count the theater we are uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, Northern Indian Ocean, Red Sea, uh, Eastern Med, uh, 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 Libya, we are with the Brits. So they are our natural partners. And they will stay, I hope, our natural partners. Because Saint Malo was not a treaty between EU and UK, as well as Lancaster House Treaty, which has been signed 10 years ago is not a treaty between EU and the UK, but between France and UK, and including uh, 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 many, uh, 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 many points like uh, being able to conduct joint combined operations together. Uh, uh, so we have very uh, uh, practical, very concrete items in our uh, 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 agreement. And I think, I hope, I, I, I will uh, 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 we, we, we won't do 
without the, the, the Royal Navy. We have to, to work with them. And uh, I'm talking for, for uh, uh, the French Navy, but I'm pretty, uh, uh, I think that all my counterparts from the Army and the Air Force would, would agree with me about this necessary link between the two, uh, uh, our two countries. Uh, um, China and, and Europe, China and uh, the Western Indian Ocean, <coughs> Well, the landscape has changed. Well, you're very well placed to, 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 to note that. Uh, uh, before 2008, before the pirate crisis in Somalia, uh, uh, there were no Chinese ships in, uh, in the Western uh, uh, Indian Ocean. And uh, as very often, piracy is uh, 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 is a good excuse for countries to go out of their waters. It has been true for France, it has been true for the Royal Navy, it has been true even for the US Navy uh, uh, when they were fighting uh, uh, pirates in, uh, in Libya. So uh, uh, from 2008, we, had, we have seen Chinese forces in the Gulf of Aden, and they are still here even though there is no more piracy are still signaling SSNs in the Western Indian Ocean, and it's not the, uh, the most uh, 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 efficient tool to fight against pirates. And uh, so the, lands the landscape is changing. And how is it changing? Uh, uh, well, it's, it's on the table. I don't think the, uh, the Chinese Navy is, is uh, 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 hiding anything about their uh, uh, global uh, appreciation and global ambition. And they have a base in Djibouti. Uh, uh, it is, some people say that they might build another base in Guadar, which is very similar to what we've done. We have a base in Djibouti because it's close to Bab el -Mandel. We have a base in Abu Dhabi because it's close to Ormuz. So if you are interested in the slots, in the sea lines of communication, if you want to secure your trade, naturally, you, 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 you would go in these places. But you're right, they've been uh, 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 beyond this line. They've been in, uh, uh, in, in, in the Med. I remember a week of uh, 2017, where in the Med, there were more Chinese warships than French warships. So it just lasted one week. It's, it's, it's not normal, it's not a, 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 a normal landscape, but it's something that never happened in history. And we know uh, uh, all the, uh, 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 the investment that have been done in Athens, Paris, uh, uh, in Cherchel, in Algeria, in Trieste, in uh, Italy. So we know that, and you've probably uh, read in our newspapers all the concern about uh, 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 the fifth generation of, of, uh, 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 of smartphones. So there is a, a debate in Europe about that, about uh, uh, um, <clears throat> a division that we, we have to avoid between Eastern Europe and Western Europe uh, uh, on these technological questions, on these diplomatic questions, and, and finally on military questions. Uh, uh, South China Sea. Um, um, there are different behaviors in uh, South China Sea. First, uh, uh, and, and why do we go there six, seven, ten times a year? We go there because uh, uh, the international law of the sea is at risk in this, uh, in this area of the world. And we want to show, we don't want to participate into uh, 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 the regional contest about the islands. They belong to someone. There is jurisdiction in uh, uh, Den Hagen, in uh, Hamburg, to, to, uh, to, to make decision about that. And, uh, but on our side, and uh, uh, Minister Le Drian put it when he went to the Shangri-La Dialogue in uh, 2016, said, we cannot be the country in the world with the second largest EEZ and not doing anything when uh, the law of the sea is at risk. 
So we go there and we'll still go there and we continue to go there and we'll continue to uh, by our action to uh, confirm our uh, 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 <coughs> support to freedom of navigation. I know the US are not on the same position as, 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 as us. They are entering the territorial waters. But so far, this is our the, the, the political basis of our action is freedom of navigation. Good afternoon, Admiral. I'm Admiral Chopra. Uh, you know, I have two short questions. One is, as military men, we always feel that uh, the defense budget and defense funding is inadequate almost in every country. Yes, right. I share your <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, but my, th my question is a little more pointed. There does appear to be a mismatch between our French strategic visions for the Indo-Pacific and the defense budget of France as we see it from here. And of course, the debate in the last year or so has centered more on, the, on Trump asking uh, you to up the budget with respect to NATO. But the vision that you outlined, uh, which is very clear, uh, don't you think it is uh, seriously hampered by inadequate funding? That's my first question. And the second question is a corollary on China. Uh, we all know that the Chinese influence in Oceania and South Pacific is on the increase. And um, it must be worrying Paris a bit. But how much of a real threat do you think, a real physical threat, is there from China insofar as the South Pacific is concerned? Thank you. Yeah. So I'm straight up in the Asian age. Uh, my question is, what is the relationship between France and the Quad uh, in the Indo-Pacific? Uh, there has been a lot of speculation that uh, France should be part of the uh, of this uh, grouping, and it should be enlarged from four nations to five nations. But there's also um, another school of thought that uh, France wants a sort of uh, as part of its uh, uh, you know, strategic independence, it wants to deal with uh, nations in the Indo-Pacific on its own. So it would rather interact with the Quad rather than join it. So can you tell us something about this, please? Thank you. Well, just, just so that my definition Quad won't be Quad if... Uh, if, no. if, 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 if. That's why I use the word grouping actually later, yeah. Um, um. The budget, yeah, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough ships, I don't have enough sailors. I would like to have twice the number of ships and uh, as uh, every chief uh, uh, of navies all around the world. Uh, um, uh, our defense budget is increasing. It's increasing every year by 1.8 billion euros, which is not nothing. Uh, and it's increasing every year. We add every year 1.8 more. Uh, uh, we sh uh, President Macron uh, put a, a, a target at, uh, with uh, 50 billion euros a year by 2025. It's, it, it will not make France a superpower. France will never be a superpower, for sure. So, uh, 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 but France, as I was quoting uh, President Macron, uh, 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 think that they have uh, an original, France has an original uh, uh, place in, uh, uh, among the countries and can do things, balancing, giving stability, having allies, uh, 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 being in between uh, uh, different countries. And I think that the budget I have today is uh, uh, coherent with our ambitions. Um, our budget have been decreasing for years and years and years. When I joined the Navy 40 years ago, uh, uh, we were uh, 70,000 in the Navy, uh, including 10,000 of people who were on military duty. And the other 60,000 were uh, uh, um, uh, professional sailors. Now I have 40,000 professional sailors, which means that during my entire career of 40 years, every year 
we've cut down by 500. So we are organized. We are our, we are like fakir. <laughs> we are like Indian gurus and fakir. We are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And, and, and what changed was the terrorist attack, where the terrorist attack in Paris in 2015. At that time, President Hollande stopped decreasing of the defense budget. He stopped, uh, uh, and when President Macron arrived, he increased the defense budget, and he increased it significantly. You, you, you cannot imagine yourself as a peaceful country far away from every crisis, uh, and uh, uh, well, then the crisis that started in Syria was in the streets of Paris. The guys who have organized the attacks in Paris, killing 150 people, they were in Syria, although it's uh, 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 several thousand of kilometers away. So if you want to defend yourself, you just cannot stay on the frontier and wait for the bad guys to arrive. You have to have the tools. So, uh, 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 so we are changing, uh, uh, we, uh, we are increasing our defense budget. Not enough, not, not fast enough, and, and, but I think it's coherent with uh, what was written on our strategic review in 2017. What are our ambition? What do we want to be able to do? First, nuclear deterrence. Second, contribute to the stability of the world, of a rule-based order world, be uh, 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 a shoulder to shoulder with our uh, European allies, and, and so on. So I, I, I think there is a, a, a coherence. Is there a, a threat of China in South Pacific? Uh, uh, we have observed uh, many fishermen uh, coming either from uh, continental China or uh, uh, of Taiwan or Vietnam, uh, the famous blue boats from, uh, from Vietnam. We've seen them in, uh, we caught them in New Caledonia or uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the Southern Pacific. And so we are, well, I think that uh, we don't want the first step to be crossed. So we're very cautious, and, and we are, we have, we're patrolling with our aircraft, with our patrol boats. We don't need to have aircraft carriers to patrol our EEZ. We need simple tools, and then we, 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 we catch them. But uh, 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 as I said before, the landscape is changing, and as Raymond Aron said, Raymond Aron was uh, 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 a political scientist in France and, uh, and a strategist. He said, uh, uh, capabilities make intentions. So we are uh, 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 looking at that. Uh, uh, will France join a quint? Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just an admiral. I, I, I don't know. We are working closely with each member of, uh, of the Quad. Uh, 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 we had, uh, for the Navy, we have a very strong interaction with the Indian Navy. Uh, uh, last year, we had the largest uh, uh, French Indian exercise ever, Varuna, which was in Mumbai, with the <laughs> aircraft carriers, with submarines, with special forces, with EOD. Uh, um, this morning and, and uh, during the lunch, I was with my Indian counterpart, uh, Admiral Singh, and we were uh, 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 preparing the year ahead and the two years ahead. We have many projects. We know we can do better. We know we have to understand what's happening in the Indian Ocean. We know we have to understand it with our ships, with our submarines, with our satellites. We need to share all this information. We need to be closer, and we, we are going to build that. Uh, 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 we are working with Australia, uh, especially since uh, uh, we, we, they, they decided to buy and build <laughs> French submarines in Australia, 12 French submarines. So we have a, a new partnership with Australia. Uh, uh, US is part of, of NATO, uh, and uh, so we have been working with them for, for decades. And Japan, uh, uh, last year, after uh, Charles de Gaulle went to India, uh, Charles de Gaulle went to Singapore, and before reaching Singapore, in the Gulf of Bengal, we had a huge exercise with the Japanese, with Izumo Group, 
the Japanese, the US, and the Australian, called La Pérouse. So we are not member of the Quad, but we are working closely which, with each of the countries that compose this, uh, uh, this group. And, uh, but we are member of other, uh, uh, other uh, uh, um, <coughs> groups, like IONS. IONS is a very, uh, 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 well, India invented IONS, Indian Ocean Navy Symposium. And I will take presidency of IONS next July in Réunion Island. We are talking of groups. If you can elaborate on what is uh, what is your thinking about the future of NATO? Your <laughs> <laughs> your, your uh, pres uh, president's uh, comments uh, were very much in, in, in limelight recently. So we were wondering if there is a rethink going on in in, 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 in France about uh, what NATO can and cannot do, and possibly France's relation to NATO. I knew I should not I should not have no. come here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there are two things in NATO. Uh, 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 there is the brain, President Macron was talking about. The brain is politics, is cohesiveness, is the uh, uh, Article 5 uh, uh, saying that if any member of NATO is uh, under threat, then the other countries must help the country uh, at risk. This is the brain. And then, there are the legs. And as a military uh, uh, personnel, I'm uh, uh, dealing with the legs. What are the legs? The legs are standardization of procedures, of, of, of uh, uh, equipments, of uh, uh, organizing exercises. And for that, this is extremely valuable. If when we had the Varuna exercise, if we were able to talk easily which with a, uh, 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 Indian uh, uh, ships, it's because we were using procedures that have been invented somewhere in Brussels or within NATO. So we rely for our cooperation. It, it is, a, it is a, a masterpiece of interoperability, both for, for, for equipment and for procedures and for tactics. And I am a day-to-day -to -day user of this part of NATO, the legs of NATO. Uh, can I ask as you drop it? OK. OK. Uh, yeah, I'll allow that. Yes. You spoke about the article, article 5 angle. It's practically dead. Last year, there was a talk. NATO and Turkey parting of the ways. And, uh, Foreign Affairs Advisor of President Erdogan was there. I posed the question to him. If Turkey invokes Article 5, NATO is not going to come because your interests lie elsewhere. And yours, if NATO invokes, you won't come. So what's the value of it? He just looked at it. He says, practically nothing. Thank you. <laughs> um. Um, I have no answer to your question. I think it's a, a, a really a political level answer. And as I told you, I am a mere admiral. Uh, 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 but you have tons of people talking about that on, on newspapers. There is, uh, uh, in a few weeks, a NATO summit in London. And I'm sure they will talk about that. And I'm sure that uh, uh, they will, you will have an answer to your question. As as far as I'm concerned, uh, 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 um, we are working every day with our partners and allies, and a lot of them belong to NATO, and even those who don't belong to NATO work with NATO procedures, and we need that. And, and for Article 5, in, in, before coming to Article 5, there is already a lot of uh, what we call reassurance operation. We are in the Baltic Sea. We are, French troops are in Estonia. We are going to the Black Sea. We are working within the NATO organization to deter and to stabilize uh, uh, many parts of the, uh, of the European continent. Admiral Kisrov, I am from the Indo-Asian News Service. Uh, did you meet your uh, Indian counterpart uh, 
during uh, your visit and what are, can you tell us the areas of discussion that you had with your Indian counterpart? I mean, are there any plans to take forward the bilateral maritime defense cooperation? <coughs> Indian counterpart and uh, and we had a, 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 a working session together and then we had lunch together and we talked about biryani and uh, and <laughs> and uh, no uh, 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 we had lessons to learn from our last interaction with our aircraft carriers and with uh, our uh, submarines so we've talked about that how can we go further what 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 are the lessons learned. Is there some shortfalls in our cooperation? How could we fill them? And, and how could we go further, uh, uh, either on submarine or, or uh, 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 aircraft carrier operations or EOD uh, capabilities and many things like that, and, and also about terrorism. Uh, uh, so I cannot enter the details, but, but uh, uh, the whole spectrum of naval capabilities have been uh, 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 studied together. Yeah, I work for the Hindu newspaper. Two questions. One, you briefly mentioned about joint patrols with India Navy in future in 2020. So can you just give elaborate on that timeline and modalities? Where is the discussions on that? Two, more specifically on the uh, MDA and information exchange. And you're also sending an officer to the IFC Indian Navy's facility here. So in that direction, can you give a little more? And also the maritime constellation of satellites that's coming up in that domain. What's the, f the way forward on that? Last time I came to India for raising a dialogue, Admiral uh, uh, Lomba, uh, who was uh, head of the Navy, uh, 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 <clears throat> drove me to uh, uh, IFC and told me I would be interested in having a, a legend officer uh, in the IFC. So I sent one at, as soon as possible. Uh, we have a legend officer in Singapore, in the IFC in Singapore. We have a legend officer in Madagascar, where there is also a kind of IFC called uh, uh, CIFIM. Uh, 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 and we are building in Brest, in Brittany, uh, a center dedicated to maritime security, called uh, MICA, uh, uh, Maritime Information Center Awareness. It's so far, it's, it's uh, centered on Western Africa and Horn of Africa, and, uh, but uh, uh, we want to extend the capabilities of this uh, MICA center and uh, to be able to give the shipping industry in France some assessment and recommendation for their safety. And if you want to do that, you have to exchange. You have to exchange information. You have to exchange assessments. As I was saying, when you were in the Indian Ocean, you're not here just for organizing cocktail and during port visits. You are here to, 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 to know the environment, to understand not only the weather, but the way people are behaving. Fishermen and, 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 and trading, maritime trading, and so on. So we need these exchanges to reinforce our understanding on just basic uh, 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 situation on, in the Western uh, uh, Indian Ocean and, and maybe the Gulf of Bengal. So we, we are just putting that on, uh, well, we are at the first step on, uh, on this. Uh, uh, you talked about uh, uh, satellite um, uh, uh, constellation. Um, we, we will never have enough ships and enough aircraft to patrol all day long the whole area of uh, the Indian Ocean. You need to rely on other systems. And for example, you need to have a, a satellite system to know where illegal fishermen may be. And instead of sending uh, your patrol boat or your frigate in a place where there is nobody, you will give a direction, you will give a zone, and that's what we've done in, in, in the southern Indian Ocean, around Kerguelen Island. When we decided to use satellite information, it was a lot easier to catch the bad guys. So uh, 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 we have ships, we have aircrafts, we have, we'll have satellite together to, 
to, to have a, 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 a another tool for a global overview of what's going on on the uh, uh, on the ocean. And uh, but I don't think it will be enough because if you look at satellite images, uh, uh, you are droned by information. You need to analyze that, and you need to analyze that. You need artificial intelligence. You need big data processes, and this is all the way which is uh, 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 after this uh, satellite uh, uh, cooperation. And uh, as far as uh, for for our uh, 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 dual operation, well, I, I we're still working on that. We have. Uh, a very precise uh, 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 objectives, but uh, uh, I I will wait until we are uh, uh <clears throat> we agree on uh, the the region and uh, the period of the time to 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 go on public for that. Sorry. Oh, the dual dual operation du dual uh, uh, survey operations. Uh, coordinated joint. Well, I, 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 I will not command an Indian ship. Okay, I will not command an Indian ship, and 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 an Indian ship will not be commanded by an Indian admiral. But we'll agree before of that. Okay, we want. This is the the the, the part of ocean that we want to to look at. And we want to look at it for a month or a week or a, 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 a trimester. And this is how we'll organize our survey. And these are the links that we'll have between uh, uh, our aircraft and, uh, and our ships and, and, and so on. But if one day the Indian Navy or the French Navy need to take the ship out or the aircraft out, they will do it. So I would say coordinated rather than joint. General de Gaulle used to say that uh, nuclear deterrence in France uh, uh, was not directed towards anyone. But this is right And, uh, and uh, <coughs> so until until they decided to uh, uh, to build a nuclear deterrent tool in uh, in France, we have been modernizing all the time this tool, and we are. Uh, uh, and we will and we'll still do it. And we will do it in the future. We have reduced the size of our nuclear force after uh, uh, the end of the Cold War. We have reduced it by one third. We have uh, uh, we used to have six SSBN. We just have four. Uh, we have reduced by one third the number of planes. We have reduced. We have uh, uh, suppressed the. Uh, uh, um, the land-to-land -land ballistic missiles, and so we still have uh, an air force and an air deterrent system and an oceanic deterrent system. Uh, for the uh, uh, oceanic deterrent system, uh, we are in the process of launching a new generation of, of SSBN with a new generation of missiles. There will be uh, an operation in uh, uh, the middle of the next decade. 
because if you want to be uh, uh, to deter your different <coughs> system has to be invulnerable and credible which means that uh, uh, you cannot for the oceanic part of it you cannot detect it and you have all the industrial tools <coughs> to maintain it. so this requires uh, 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 a new generation every let's say well for the French SSBN it will be after 30 years of use of the actual uh, generation we'll have a new generation and we're doing the same thing with the missiles and uh, with the uh, uh, with the air component and for the air component there is a program for having new uh, 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 missiles uh, to carry uh, nuclear weapons and these missiles will be uh, operated by the Air Force and but the Rafales on board Charles de Gaulle and the next uh, uh, aircraft carrier that we'll have is the comp a, a naval component to the air deterrent uh, component. Uh, so my name is uh, Abhijit Singh. I'm a senior fellow at the ORF. I have a question uh, uh, that pertains to the strategic review, the 2017 strategic review which is actually a, an excellent document in that it's, it's, it, is, it has brevity, it has great clarity, and also the fact that it doesn't pull its punches. It's, it, it states the issues like they are. Uh, but from an outsider's perspective, it seems that there are three themes that repeat themselves in the, in the document. One of them is the emphasis on terrorism, which is understandable. The other is great power competition which also from a French point of view is something that makes complete sense because of you know, what's happening between the US and China, et cetera, the, the power balance. And the third thing is this increasing threat to multilateralism. Uh, so if you if, if want to read the, the document thoroughly, there's a lot of maritime security issues of power balance as well as traditional and non-traditional security. Nowhere does one get to read anything, very much anything on capacity building, maritime development. This is a theme that is quite um, sort of, you know, it's, it's talked about in the region. A, a lot of countries want actually to build capacity. One of the challenges that India is looking at is building capacity among the smaller countries in the Indian Ocean region. Would France look at a partnership with India in building capacity in, say, uh, the, the Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, you know, that region? And second question would be that it seems as if the entire stress uh, from the French side is on a partnership with the Indian Navy in the Southern Indian Ocean. Uh, President Macron's three-pronged strategy talks about greater maritime security cooperation with the Indian Navy, greater maritime surveillance, uh, sharing, uh, sharing of information with the Indian Navy. And the third thing he says that we are looking forward to hosting Indian ships on reunion. Uh, everything has to do with the Southern Indian Ocean. Will we see a partnership develop also in uh, in, in South Asia, maritime South Asia, perhaps, or also the Central Indian Ocean, uh, and also are we is there is there a plan to get the Indian Navy more involved in the larger Pacific region? France is an active player, but is there a plan to mobilize greater Indian support for the patrols? I mean, as Dinakar had asked, the patrols that are happening in that region. Okay. Uh, but you, you've been a, 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 a very attentive reader of uh, the uh, uh, strategic review. And uh, yes, you're right. At that time, uh, uh, it was used just two years after the terrorist attack in Paris. So terrorism was very uh, uh, present in our minds because I had the, the, the privilege to be part of the uh, uh, redaction committee of the uh, uh, writing committee of this, uh, of this uh, analysis. Uh, great power competition uh, was clear to us with the uh, uh, rising new powers and uh, um, what has been written on multilateral well the the, uh, the decreasing phase in which uh, multilateralism was uh, entering i think it has been reinforced by uh, brexit uh, by uh, and by the uh, and the position the uh, um, that had been taken recently by by for example by the uh, uh, um, american uh, president trump uh, there is uh, uh, something that you didn't mention in, uh, in, uh, in this paper, was uh, the requirement for autonomy. 
And uh, 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 the question that the president asked us, uh, the, the, uh, the, the writers of the uh, uh, strategic review, was uh, I want a landscape. I want a landscape and I want major access for a future uh, 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 action. But don't go into the details. After the strategic review, another paper was issued called the Web Programmation Militaire, the investment, investment programmation law, uh, covering from 2019 to 2025. So I know already almost how much money I will get every year, starting from now until 2025. And uh, this is a, a, a complement to the uh, uh, <coughs> to the strategic landscape that was uh, uh, described in uh, in the 27. And this is where the issue of capabilities are uh, 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 analyzed. I, I'm we've been talking this morning with Admiral Singh about cooperation on capabilities. And uh, uh, we're just at the beginning of our uh, mutual story. And I think we, we, there are many issues uh, I want to turn into details now that we can cooperate with. Because we have a, a similar size Navy. And uh, we have a, a similar threats, similar organization. So I'm sure we can, we can come closer. Uh, but I, well, I don't agree with you. Is about your uh, um, uh, the stress on southern Indian Ocean. There is a natural stress because uh, uh, Réunion, Mayotte, Kerguelen Island are in the southern Indian Ocean, and uh, 1.5 million French citizens are living there. But uh, uh, all the heavy warships, <coughs> all the nuclear subs, all the aircraft carrier, we send operates in Northern Indian Ocean. Uh, <coughs> we are working, we have now a, a, a destroyer in uh, Hormuz, and uh, we are thinking about uh, interacting on a day-to-day -day basis with the Indian Navy. Uh, uh, it's not enough that the chief of the Navy comes to New Delhi, or reversely, that an Indian chief of the Navy comes to Paris. We have to have a, a, a Routine, routine exchanges between uh, between us, and I have in Abu Dhabi uh, uh, an admiral called Alain after your country, uh, uh, whose uh, responsibility is Northern Indian Ocean. He is the only admiral uh, uh, having a joint command, uh, and he's Alain So, in my mind, what's happening in the Northern Indian Ocean? is, uh, well, the Southern Indian Ocean is a question of sovereignty, and in the Northern Indian Ocean, it's a question of strategy. I'm Sahil from uh, a &I. Uh, There are talks that uh, 57 Rafale aircraft uh, will be due to uh, uh, to Indian Navy, what is the status on that? Do you know what kind of status are, are you talking about? Uh, oh. I'm asking about. I'm asking about that uh, they are fighter crafts, Rafale fighter craft for the Indian Navy. Yes. There are talks about it. Yes. So what is the status like? Uh, are the are the talks done, or when will we get it? Well, I, 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 I really don't know because I'm neither uh, uh, Eric Papier, president of uh, Dassault uh, uh, Aviation, uh, 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 nor in the Indian government. What, what I know about uh, in, in the French Navy, I have 42 Rafales. Uh, they are operating on the Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle used to have uh, uh, both Rafale and Super and now is a totally Rafale uh, 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 equipped aircraft carrier. Uh, uh, I am extremely satisfied with the viability of this aircraft during the last deployment of the aircraft carrier from Toulon to Singapore and back to Toulon, uh, which lasted almost six months, five months. 
uh, at the level, the, the, the uh, rate of availability was 90%, which was very, very high. Well, because of the quality of the aircraft, but mm -hmm. also because of the number of the spare parts and the quality of the technicians. And uh, so I, I'm extremely satisfied for myself uh, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with this aircraft that is operating in, on our aircraft carrier since 2001. It was probably the first uh, 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 fighter jets, French fighter jets, coming over Afghanistan after uh, the attacks in New York. Behind that, uh, uh, I think there is a question of, uh, of uh, food security for many of the countries. Uh, uh, maybe you have read a book called uh, uh, Canary Row, written by John Stanley <coughs> uh, uh, in the 40s. He was uh, uh, describing the city of Monterey, California, which at, that, which at that time was the first port for fishing Sardinia. And uh, there was a huge industry of canning the Sardinia in, uh, in, uh, on, in the Canary Road. And suddenly, all the fishes disappeared. It was a massive extinction of the fishes. They have, the American fishermen, they have fished so intensively that they destroyed all the stock. And I think that in some places of the world, this may happen again. And on the other hand, one billion people rely on fish 
for protein. So there is uh, 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 behind behind the lack of resources for the countries that are still age, there is a real threat to the stability of the society. It's, it's, it's very true in Western Africa. And we're working with the countries in Western Africa. They have, by themselves, uh, uh, installed uh, uh, a political process called the Yande process, including uh, 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 exchange of information, cooperation at sea, uh, 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 legal adjustment between all these countries. And, and I think everywhere that where we can detect with the Indian Navy or, or by ourselves or with the uh, local countries uh, uh, such massive illegal fishing we have to be careful and, and try to help the countries to, uh, 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 to, to protect their heritage <coughs> Question. I want to know from you, is there one or two areas that you think where our cooperation hasn't quite been up to the mark? I mean, we hear so much about India-French uh, you know, maritime cooperation, and we know that it's a partnership that's really been working well. But are there, are there one or two areas where the French side thinks that there's, there's greater scope for improvement, and that maybe the Indian side hasn't done enough? I mean, I want to know from you, frankly, about what you think about what the partnership has been like. Uh, well, we are, we are, our discussions are very friendly. Uh, we try to cover uh, the wider, as, as wide spectrum as possible. And uh, there is no censor on our discussions. So we, we've been talking from uh, uh, aircraft carriers to uh, 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 submarines and uh, EOD. I, I, so far, I, there is no. There is no forbidden path for me, and I don't think there is uh, 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 either for my uh, for Amir or Singh, my counterpart. Just to round off this discussion, two small points to make. One is if you can elaborate a bit on what's the thinking in France about the resurgence of Russia. How are you viewing this, this aspect of, of Russia coming back, and, and is there a threat from Russia to you? Europe that has been received. Uh, we hear increasingly that we would like to hear from you uh, insofar as your threat perception is concerned. The other is, uh, you know, a lot of the maritime debate for the last, uh, since the end of the Cold War, in fact, has been about how American Navy has been this great bulwark uh, in terms of managing uh, global trade, in terms of managing global economy, the role that American global presence has played uh, in, in shaping global order. And as, uh, as America retreats on the world stage, as we hear from, uh, you know, as, as we see, it see, seems to be happening, what's the assessment of France? Is it, is, is it, is it happening? Or will it happen? Or has the assessment in your, in your calculation been made that uh, that is a reality that the world will have to live with, and therefore partnership with like minded countries is perhaps the option to go? Okay. Uh, um, <coughs> Well, Russia is a, is a, a, a huge country. Russia is a, is a, a great power. Uh, 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 Russia has a, um, a, a very uh, uh, very good capabilities, especially in submarines and missiles. Uh, in, uh, and uh, <coughs> so I. I um, there is a debate within Europe, especially uh, between Western Europe and uh, Eastern Europe, about uh, 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 how to consider uh, Russia. Uh, uh, President Macron uh, uh, had some uh, uh, very strong points recently, uh, asking for uh, more cooperation and more uh, discussion with Russia. Uh, uh, I received recently a letter from my uh, Russian counterpart to go to Russia and, 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 uh, and have more regular uh, uh, exchanges with him. And I would be very happy to, to go there because uh, we are very often uh, uh, sailing close together. And uh, if we want to avoid any missing competition, we need to have a, a, a discussion, we need to have talks. 
And uh, so we are in this movement to, uh, uh, to, to talk with Russia. And uh, I understand that in, in some places it's uh, uh, where we are question about this uh, initiative by President Macron. But uh, as I say, Russia is a great power. Great Russia has uh, a lot of capabilities. And so it's part of the uh, strategic landscape that uh, we have to work with. Uh, is the US retreating from the world stage? Uh, uh, well, obviously they are. And they have announced it from President Obama to President Trump. It was the pilot from uh, uh, Europe and the Middle East towards uh, Asia and, and I think they are in the process of, of uh, uh, creating this uh, uh, this pivot and uh, this uh, forced us French and European to, to think about uh, uh, who are we and uh, what do we want for our own security for our own safety are we a geopolitical object or are we nothing and this is a debate uh, uh, I, I, I've read some uh, 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 articles by uh, uh, Ursula von der Leyen about this topic she was asking for a, a, a stronger response of the European which is aligned with the uh, Macron uh, uh, requirement for strategic autonomy of Europe so I, I would say that this is a consequence or maybe consequence. This is coherent <coughs> with the American position of pivot, of piloting their uh, uh, strength and their forces more to the Pacific Ocean, more to Asia. Thank you, Angela. You have been very patient with the doctor. Lots of questions, and you have very patiently answered all of them uh, in great detail. So we thank you for uh, again for come to our and enlightening us uh, on the French French's vision of the Indo Pacific. Uh, please keep coming back, and thank you. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.